All right, I'm starting to think that I can basically make my own review videos after I've watched, you know, episode. And with episode 15, I want to talk about Reezer episode 15, man. So immediately the episode starts off with, you know, the end of 14. And I just thought it was so comical again because of the music choice that they sh implemented at the end of 14, which was peak, you know, myth and Royd, right? But that... <laughs> The, the exciting pop, you know, banger of a music while Rem is dead. I'm like, oh man, I don't even know how to feel about this. The cult members showed up and they basically have killed everyone, right? Subaru goes through looking at the different corpses packed, like, stacked up. It's like corpses literally like burning, right? They piled up the corpses, they burn it. Bodies are in the sheds. Everyone that he got close to in the village, right? The kids, the elders, even like the lady who groped Subaru's ass. Straight up, you could see her arm dangling out and it kind of hurts. But I can't tell if the cult members are actually that strong or if they just simply outnumbered them. Because like, you know, Rem, Rem, we have Roswell. And one has to wonder, what the fuck was Roswell doing this entire time? Why would he not be able to fend against the cult members? There's something so suspicious with Roswell and his actions with Subaru. And remember, Roswell's goal is to kill the dragon. And it's his bent interest to, you know, get Emila to the throne to kill the dragon. But he was also fine with having Subaru fuck up the ceremony. He was fine with Subaru joining in in, in, in you know, you know the, uh, the dragon carriage ride into town and making a fool of himself. And he smiled when he fucked up. So at that point, one second. At that point, my, my intuition was, all right, if Subaru is fucking up and this is making Emil look bad, and this is against Roswell's you know, wish to kill the dragon and put Emil in the throne, then maybe... This is Roswell's grand plan in a counterintuitive way to cut Subaru off because he realized that this is the only way to get rid of this motherfucker so that Amelia doesn't have a liability. That's the one conclusion that I can come to right now after watching, you know, just season one up till episode 15. But other than that, the guy is so mysterious. Where the fuck was he? Where was he? He was nowhere to be shown. Why? Is it just a convenient thing where someone as strong as Roswell cannot be there to protect? Or was this done intentionally? My... So, I've been having more schizo theories recently. My schizo theories is Roswell is also the ex-Grand Wizard or the Grand Wizard of the church. The Witch's Cult's Grand Wizard is Roswell. If there's a bunch of Archbishops, then there's gonna be a Grand Wizard <laughs> above the Arch Archbishops. I don't know, I'm talking on my ass. And... Well, Roswell wants to kill the dragon, right? And why would someone want to kill the dragon? Think about that. What took to unseal the witch? Sorry. What, what took to steal the witch? A dragon, a hero, and a sage. If you kill the dragon, after the day of the ordeal, if Satella is resurrected, if that is the ordeal, then does it not make sense that Roswell killing the dragon now creates a scenario where Satella can no longer be sealed? And he is just... You know, the greatest fucking Grand Wizard of all time? I'm not sure. I'm just trying to make connections and make things sense in my head. Why is he not here? Where the fuck did he go? Who knows? But if he just went El Ghul and just killed everybody, you know, that would be too easy. Man, what the fuck was this scene? Why was Petra's eyes gouged out? Someone said that the cult members just hate the kids, specifically. Like, Rem's eyes weren't gouged out. Other people's eyes weren't gouged out. Petra in specific? The cult members fucking hate Petra. Is Petra... Is this like a personal thing? Is it a random shit? I'm not sure. Do you think there's a motive here? Do you think that there is motive intent on gouging Petra's eyes or not? If there is, why would Petra be a target? I have no fucking clue, man. But such a haunting moment where we open the door... And their ship calms down. And I think this flower pin is Petra's, right? And then the events after that, going through the different places in the mansion, and boom! Hey, guess what? We have a hidden library. There is a hidden library in Roswell's mansion. Not the fucking secret library that Biko has, but like, behind this door, what the fuck is this? Some sort of like, bunker. And we go in there, everything is frozen, clearly because Puck has been, you know, going berserk. And in this run, uh, Puck says, you're too late. At the end of episode 15, Puck says, sleep along with my daughter. Daughter meaning Amelia. Therefore, even in this run, because like, 
Right now, we arrived at the Ant Mansion earlier, but at the end of 15, because we fucked around with Betrugis, we arrived much later. So this is like the early onset before the snowstorm happened in the mansion, is my understanding. And then, dude, it was so cold, he touched the fucking doorknob, and his fingers immediately got cut off. That's some crazy absolute zero shit. I'm surprised he was able to even, like, get there close enough. And then you see the leg fall off, too, because everything is just frozen. And then... He sees the cult members, and the cult member mask symbol, what is that? One could simply see that it's like an eye, right? It looks like an eye, but I thought that maybe, like, if you just look at this side and you exclude the pointy side on the left side, this is like the Bible, right? I'm just trying to relate what I know about the Bible, because, like, I don't know shit, but I know that I had a Bible before and it had this little fish symbol in it, right? And I'm trying to relate to themes of Bible and Christianity and religion with the cult to see if there's any sense there. But basically, this shape with three lines across it, which is cult. Why is there, <laughs> why is there mass so fucking pointy though? It's just like so easy to make fucking KKK jokes on that man. And boom, what does Puck say? You're too late. Puck was waiting. But Puck, what am I supposed to do, bro? It's so fucking hard. We need more powerful friends to help us out, but it's such an impossible situation. Then boom. <laughs> Appa guy. Why Appa guy? Why Appa guy, bro? Again, the checkpoint is him? Is that just a coincidence, bro? I don't know. But hey, he's the fucking next checkpoint again. And Rem is there, and Subaru just has a fucking mental breakdown, right? Because he's so happy that... Because, like, what did he just witness? He just witnessed everyone that he loved, everyone that he fought for, massacred. Brutal. Like, just absolute, just savagery, right? And then Subaru has a mental breakdown and then starts to just, like, you know, this is, like, the worst state he's ever been. This face, I think, is the most memeable Subaru face, right? I've seen this face before I even watched ReZero because so many people fucking meme with this face. You can see how darkened his eyes is, right? Physical wounds are one thing, but emotional scars are another story. I want you to realize that the entirety of Subaru's fucking mental collapse, Felix, was still saying cat puns. <laughs> it is the funniest shit. And I actually watched this last night in English dub too. Felix English dub saying this in a cat pun while he's having a mental breakdown is like comical on a different fucking level. <laughs> Yeah, emotional scars are a nothing story, Mew. And I'm like, bro, are you fucking serious? Hey, at least you're fucking, you know, uh, you're, you're sticking to the the cat pun script. Any idea what caused this? No, I've checked every nook and cranny of him. Well, what caused this is, again, the shock of the massacre that happened to the people that he loved and tried to protect before, right? What are the odds? It's not a curse, right? There's no indication, no curse. It's just like a psychological mental breakdown is what's going on, right? And remember, Ferris, what does Ferris mean? Fetis is not a bad sub. It means that it's a pet name. Krush calls Felix Fetis. But to everyone else, it's Felix. My subs are fucking sweaty. And then, basically, we leave, right? The gate healing. Nothing can be done, and we leave. And then Rem, we can distinctly see this miasma leak out. And not everybody points out the miasma. Only specific people do. Beko has mentioned it. Rem has mentioned it, therefore I'm gonna assume Ram also knows. Maybe Emilia also knows, but she's just not making a comment on it. But you can tell that, like, just because we're in public, regular people don't just go, Oh my god, the stench of the witch, right? That doesn't happen. Only specific people can sense this. And I'm gonna assume that Roswell can also sense this. Now, if Roswell can sense the witch's stench on him, what is he thinking? Everything, again, it's just like, I want to know, I want to peek into Roswell's mind because he's one of the most mysterious people. He clearly had, like, I'm assuming he knows because Rem and Ram know. Like, every run, the stench gets worse. And Roswell, what is he thinking? Well, to Roswell, it's seeing him for the first time because obviously to us, we're regressing. But to him, it's just like one smooth route, right? I don't know. And why is Subaru stench getting worse? Because it is the witch's favor, right? The Witch of Envy Satala favors Subaru for whatever reason. My theory still is, again, it has to do with his desire to protect Amelia, who is an important key to the Day of the Ordeal, whether it be a sacrifice, a catalyst, key, vessel, something to awaken Satala 
is the reason why Satola probably gave him the regression powers. So that with each run, Subaru gets like more sent to the witch. And now, because we've seen Betrugus this episode, remember what he said, authority of sloth, unseen hand? I'm gonna assume, because Betrugus is also very jealous of Subaru about his thick scent, the musk of the witch, that this miasma is directly correlated to the power levels of these authorities. So if Subaru were to become an Archbishop, would he be extremely strong? Maybe. I'm just gonna assume that the Witch's Miasma is basically like the mana for like fucking cult member magic. And just think about the possibilities, man. Just if Subaru could harness that power, oh, he wouldn't just be just random kid with just fucking Shamak, bro. He wouldn't just like... You know, what does he have right now? We have Shamak. And that's pretty much it, right? He's got like base martial arts, which is pretty decent. But like, it's Shamak and... And then he has the mechanic of, you know, I... Uh, what's it called? I can return to this. And here's another interesting thing. If we're going to assume that the Miasma is directly correlated with the powers of like Archbishop Magic or whatever, the authorities. If Subaru were to leak, right? If Subaru were to leak that I have returned to death, at that point, the stench spikes for a split second or so, right? Not constantly. I heard that it spikes and returns back to normal. It acts as an AoE taunt. But during that spike, would Subaru's authority, if he has any, be stronger? You know what I'm saying? Like, during that short frame of period when he leaks and everyone is enraged and provoked because his stench just got spiked. Is that an opportunity for him to use even stronger powers? Is what I'm thinking about. But this miasma has always been such an interesting topic. The first time it was mentioned, I think, is episode 7 when Ren was torturing Subaru, right? And I'm like, what? Which is sent? What the fuck? It's actually so hype, man. And Satella, she must really love Subaru, huh? Because, like, if you try to think from Satala's side, and we've never met Satala, but she's, like, a witch, and she loves Subaru, so she's, like, giving him more powers with each regression. Maybe Subaru's authority is the return by death. Huh. What? Authority of pride, return by death? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Is it? Is, but we don't have a gospel, though. Do we need a gospel to use it? I don't know. The gospel is another important piece that was mentioned in the story. And how, like, Betrugu said, if, you, if a gospel finds its way to you, then you'll be saved. But, like, that's an interesting thing to think about. Return by death could be an existing authority for Subaru. And it's something Satellite gave to him. I don't know. I don't know. But I still want Subaru to have some kick-ass powers with this miasma. Right? And then Rem leaves with Subaru, right? Pass this along for Amelia for me. Let us... Wait, what is this? Let us... Ah, fuck, come on. Let us compete in a manner that brings neither of us in shame. I think Crucia's character is very underlooked, man. I think that, like, Krush is such a reasonable person that lays down the rules and the contract and agreements, and she was not being hostile to Subaru when, you know, Subaru left in episode 14 saying, you know, if you leave now, we're gonna be enemies. So I think that, again... There is potential for alliance here, as long as we can figure out some sort of mutual benefit, right? We need to figure out some sort of mutual benefit to get, to, to get like, strong friends involved. And I feel like Yulis would still help, man, but Krush is a fantastic character. Also, the <laughs> nighttime licorice scene was fucking out of nowhere, but I enjoyed that fan service. Also, do you think that Felix wants to monopolize Krush? Like, I don't know. Cruz said, like, oh, sorry, Emil sorry, Felix said, oh, Cruz, you're so vulnerable right now. I, I don't know if Felix has anything, you know, Felix wants with Cruz, but we need more characterization for more, more like scenes with both of them to understand what Felix really is. But they just seems to be really good friends. But I don't know. Not, I don't know if the fanboy is trying to do something with Cruz, man. And then what happens, right? What happens is we leave here. Oh yeah, this is an important line here. Your relationship with him is unlike Ferris and mine, that of a master and servant. So, again, no love here. Remember, master and servant. 
But then, you know, Krush says, your behavior, the glances you cast, are those of a woman gives a man. Subaru, can you hear this shit? He's too fucking zoned out. Forget I said that. No, Rem loved that. It's just, how can I put it? And the wording here is important here. Well, Subaru is special to me, right? I suppose it is because Subaru-kun is special. And I thought not much of this line until someone in, chatter, uh, someone in chat reminded me that this is what Subaru said to Amelia when Julius asked about, like, what is Amelia to you? And Subaru said, she's special. And Julius backed down there. And so did Krush here. Meaning the word special in uh, this isekai culture, there's something more than just glaze. The special is like, um, I don't know, like an un like a unspoken truth that they're love like I love them or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. Natsuki Subaru definitely is a lucky man that he has Rem, but at the same time, he's very unlucky for a lot of other fucking reasons, man. And then we leave Wilhelm. <sighs> I just feel like, again, powerful friends are all around us, whether it be Krush, Felix, Wilhelm, Julius, the other candidates, Priscilla, Anastasia, Al, right? If Subaru could just figure it out and figure a way to have powerful friends to create a team to challenge, like, we cannot do this together. We cannot do this alone, right? There is no way we can take down Betelgeuse the right now alone as it stands. But if we have powerful friends, if he had the charisma and the aura to convince people to help him, if he could figure out the incentives of what is mutually beneficial amongst every party. If he could just figure it out like Anakoji, this shit would be easy. But hey, maybe he'll figure that out later. And then I think that this moment definitely is the weaker part of the episode. And it's not even that weak. How long was it? It's about like fucking three minutes straight up. Because like we were watching other videos and, you know, people saying ReZero episode 50 could be the best anime episode ever. That's a crazy thing to say, but maybe it's contest. But if you really think about it, this section was the weakest point relative to the other points. And it wasn't even bad. It was just three minutes of, you know, wrapping shit up and getting uh, Subaru out of here. And then what happens? Oh, right over here? This? I feel like he... Did he intentionally do this? Did he think... Did, did, he, did he just fucking... Was the lap pillow here intentional? What do you think? Is he just tired? Is he just tired and he's just falling asleep? Or is he like, oh, this is my opportunity for a lap pillow. I think he's just tired. I think he's just tired. He's insane. But I don't know. He's like, oh, rim ton. <laughs> Fucking rim rim lap pillow. No, if Amelia was here, then I could believe it. But because it's rim, I don't think so. Because it's Rem, I don't think this is intentional, and that's fucked up, you know? Poor Rem, but Rem is gonna take every crumb of, you know, Subaru moments that he can get. What does Rem even say? I felt a little happy to keep you to myself at Kurushisama's house. Again, because if it was at Amelia's place, right? Rem can't have all Subaru all to herself. Moments like, for, like this for Rem just shows how sweet she is. If we ignore the fact that she tortured us. But like, again, Subaru just doesn't see her like that. It's just so sad, man. You know, I cannot do that at the mansion. Poor Rem. I just want Rem to be more selfish. I want Rem to be more selfish, man. But just because Rem does this does not mean she's entitled to Subaru's love. That I am insistent on. If Subaru is going to pursue Amelia no matter what, at least give Rem a good closure and we can we can just be happy with that. But I just feel bad for Rem, man. Even though I have a new quarrel with Emilia sama And remember when Rem was happy that Ram's horn was cut off? Remember that shit? Just for a bit. And now she realizes that and now she's atoning. What if right now Rem is also like, ooh, Super and Amelia, they fought? It's my fucking chance. I Maybe a part of her felt like that. There's no way that she couldn't have, right? Also, I think that this land dragon, this dragon right over here, unsung hero, bro. We worked this dragon so hard, it was literally fucking foaming at the mouth. The poor dragon died by the cult members, man. Come on. And over here. Demonically possessed, right? We mentioned that in the first time we went into the village with Rem. And that's one of the better moments, but... <laughs> wasn't that also a lie? I, I, I Like, episode 5, I think, was when we went to the fucking village or some shit. And she's smiling, but like, 
fucked. None of that shit actually fucking mattered. Maybe the smile was genuine, but a lot of other things were not. And remember, all the different things that Subaru did in episode 2, Rem is only remembering the good shit. So even if Subaru is being cringe, even if he's treating like shit, even if he's just so pathetic, Rem remembers the season, you know, arc 2 Subaru and the heroics he did, how demonically possessed, and that's why she just keeps rooting for him, man. I just feel like she deserves better. And then, this part is actually funny. Again, it's far too quiet. The same line was said, right? It's far too quiet. Subaru said that too when he was walking up to the mansion after getting dropped by Oftor, right? And then the cult members attack. The fucking cult members, bro. Boom. What is this? This is the uh, twin connection. Uh, Ram, Rem gets a signal. Boom. Uh-oh, something bad is happening. That was sister. Uh-oh. This is like a, this is like a, what's it called? An alert, right? It's like a red alert, red alert. The poor dragon's head gets cut off. And now the cult members show up, bro. They're knives. They're daggers. Look at that shit. It's like a cross with a short blade on it. They all have the similar uniform. And again, the symbol of their mask, right? And boom. Already demon mode rem. Demon mode rem, bro. This is so slick. She literally caught the daggers with the wheel. Kicked that shit and immediately deflected. The way that the cult member threw the daggers was so smooth, too. Do you think that, like... What do you think the classes are? Think about it. Think about, like, uh, the classes here. Do you think they have a throwing dagger class? Like, how are they so proficient? Like, if you join the cult, do you think that there's, like, lessons? Like, oh, today we're throwing daggers. Today we're learning how to knit our pointy hats. <laughs> I'm not sure, but they were so fucking proficient with the dagger throwing, man. Imagine ReZero Petite or Break Time, but from the cult perspective. Could you imagine having ReZero Petite? He's cute chibi moment with fucking monstrous characters like Better Goose and like other cult members, bro. I think it would go crazy. Also, regarding how like um they did not bow to Subaru here, I think that they didn't bow because things were not like before. Before Subaru was alone, he was standing right here. They probably smelled a stench and I'm assuming this is Better Goose, right? I think this one is Better Goose. And he picks up in Subaru and runs away, right? Oh, never mind. That one got that, that got close, immediately got knocked off. Maybe the person that kidnapped Subaru was Betrugus. Or maybe Betrugus was just waiting. And these are just, you know, Betrugus' men trying to take Subaru. Do you think there's an actual reason why they didn't bow here? I think they didn't bow because, again, it's not such a lax time like last run, where it was just at night time and Subaru was alone. Rem is ready to kill. They're trying to take Subaru and kidnap him, right? But last time they didn't kidnap him. Why didn't they kidnap him? No, Betrugus does wear the hat, doesn't he? Maybe we'd have to look at the different section. I thought that there was a hood that he was just not wearing. But um, why did they not kidnap Subaru in the last run? Let me think about that for a second. Because last time, they already did the deed at the mansion and they were running out, right? They were running away from the mansion. This time we were early. Maybe that's it. Because we're early, because we fought back, or maybe because the miasma of the witch is way stronger this time compared to last time, and they gave him a reason to kidnap. I think the timing is the thing, because last time again, it was at nighttime. If we're taking this specific instance of meeting the cults on the road, last time they were already done and they were, you know, running away from the mansion. So there's no reason, but this time, because it didn't happen yet, they decided to take him away. I, I think that makes sense. That plus Rem. Maybe. There's a really good line here from Rem. And right over here, I think this is fucking hilarious. This is hilarious, bro. They're running away like, oh. <laughs> it's, it's such a cute way of the cult member just running away with you, hanging with Subaru. And then Rem says, how dare you steal my reason to die, right? You, steal my, you stole my sister's horn. So now you've come here to steal my reason to die, bro. That's crazy shit. Rem wants to die for Subaru, and she did. She literally died for Subaru this episode, right? She struggled after all that, you know, the Twister games that she played. Amazing line. There's clues I can put together as, as to why they bow, but it's very hard to understand at the moment. 
Well, again, I think it has to do with the timing. Last time it was more jobs already done and we can get out, but this time jobs not done yet and there's more trouble happening. Let's just take this guy right now and we don't have time to fuck around. I don't know. I don't know. And boom. If we think about from the Witch's Miasma perspective, I don't know exactly, like, I don't know if it's a 2x factor. I don't know what math is involved in increasing Subaru's uh, Witch's Miasma. It could be exponential. Each run, is it exponential or is it linear? I'm not sure. But if we're going to think about it, last time they bowed because he had a substantial amount of Witch's Miasma. And this time, maybe it spiked even more. It's more exponential. And this time, rather than bowing, they're like, oh shit, this guy's too important. Maybe this guy is pride. Let's bring him. I don't know. I don't know. And now, this is the best part of the episode. Genuinely. This is the best part of the episode. To me, this is better. This is better than Rem Sacrifice. This is better than the shit at the end. The cinematic ending. Betrigus's performance is on another fucking level. And Kirito's voice actor who plays Better Goose, the dynamic range again, man. The absolute range he has of voice acting is just on another level, man. It's so good. And I want I watched this, I rewatched this last night and really pay attention. Really pay attention to the dialogue and like how he uh treats Subaru. Because he actually does kind of treat him with respect, right? He wakes up for Subaru to wake up immediately, right? Nice bedside manners. I see. And then he says, this is certainly interesting. And then what does he say? Are you perhaps pride, right? Come on. Are you going to show up? No. Why are you not showing up? Unfortunate that, you know, sometimes the exact sub won't show up here unless I fucking play it. But maybe I'll do this. Hold up. One second. One second. One second. Oh, the player? I'm trying to do this without editing, so give me a little time. Are you pride? Why don't you say it? Fuck! Why don't you just say, are you pride or not? Fuck, but this part, this is one of the most important lines, right? He says, are you pride? So what does that mean? It has a lot of meanings. Beyond just like the baseline of, are you the Archbishop of pride? And it's very interesting because Subaru, the theme, the main seven deadly sins that I've been obsessed with is pride because of how many times Subaru literally says he is prideful. And we can also see the pride in action. We can see it in every arc and often it is his own downfall, right? Clearly seven deadly sins is important. We have the Witch of Envy as well. And now we know that this is the Archbishop of, Archbishop of Sloth. So not only is there seven witches with every sin, but of course, Satala, the Witch of Envy, consumed them all. There is presumably seven archbishops, right? Seven archbishops with the sins. And the fact that he immediately asked, are you pride, implies that the position of pride is missing. I refuse, uh, or, or maybe Betrugus literally was able to understand that he was pride because he had prideful aura coming out of him. I don't think that makes sense. Like, did Betrigus already understand his pride? He just met him. I doubt it. So I think this is a coincidence in how the position of pride is empty right now. And, and, that Rezir and, and Subaru is prideful. I, I think that's what's happening. Of course, in this run, bro is, you know, sloth. In this episode, Subaru is in action, right? It is sloth. But Betrigus, when he says, are you pride? I'm like, oh shit, not only are you asking, are you the Archbishop of Pride? But that also implies that the position of pride is empty. Why are they waiting? So are they currently waiting for the next candidate? How do you even become an Archbishop, right? It seems like the gospel is important, but that specific dialogue of are you pride, goosebumps, bro. Fucking goosebumps. Yep, I think it is simple as he senses the witch's miasma. Someone has so much dense love of the witch and the position of pride is empty. So Better Goose makes the logical guess, are you pride, is my interpretation of this scene as well. Not because Subaru seems prideful here. No, he seems very slothful. He's fucking, you know, 
not is is he's not doing anything about this, right? And then he says, I guess you're not gonna answer me. So immediately, immediately, Betrugius asked Subaru a question and Subaru ignored. Now you can say Subaru is having a mental breakdown, sure, but he still didn't answer Betrugius. Think how Betrugius feels, right? And then he does this, ah, right, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Sin Archbishop in the Witch's Guild. Betirgus Romani Conti. This! He has this. He has this always say des at the end, bro. He always says fucking des, bro. And Subaru, he's like, <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> and this is my favorite part. Naka 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 ni! <laughs> His voice acting is so fucking sick. What a very, 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 very entertaining sight, Betirgus says, right? And he's still being nice to Subaru, right? He's still being nice to Subaru. And then he says, Wow, this is so entertaining. Truly, truly, truly. My brain trembles. Because Subaru... Because they found a person that has so much of the witch's miasma, right? They have identified a person with so much witch's miasma. Betrugius thinks that this is interesting and entertaining. Wonder what's going on. And then, boom. Cult members have some sort of like shadow move, bro. Look at this. This dude pops up from the ground. This dude literally pops up from the fucking ground. And I'm like, what? So, I don't know. Is this like cult magic? Is it like Tensura where people can like hide in people's shadows? Who really knows? Now, what has brought him here? And he says, Dragon Carrot. Better goes, Ryu! Dragon Carrot! Amazing! Aren't land dragons great? They obey diligently. Work diligently. The word diligent is a specific virtue, which is the opposite of sloth, right? When I was watching this episode for the first time and reacting to it, I was too much in the heat of the moment. To, I was too shocked to really analyze what's going on. But notice how Betrugus is so happy that it is diligently, right? Diligent, diligent, diligent. The opposite of sloth, which he represents. And they play the roles of species diligently. Subarashi! And then he says... What does he say? And then the cult member says killed. Now, I wonder if this is specific to this single cult member. Like, they don't really speak full sentences, right? He doesn't. He just says, dragon carriage killed. Is this specific to one cult member? Or is every cult member a mindless fucking drone soldier? I don't know, but... That's pretty much all we get, you know, voice lines from actual other kill uh, members. And the better goes is killed. <gasps> oh, your diligence brought the land dragon diligence itself to the ground. As in, you know, it was working hard. And you cult member, you were also working hard diligently. And now you did your mission. And the land dragon is now dead. And now my brain trembles, trembles, trembles. And then he has the realization. But hold up. If you're dead, you're no longer working hard. Therefore... You are the very definition of sloth. This actually was a great mental gymnastics from Betrugus because this is also the same talking points that I will uh, weaponize when talking about how Mushoku Tensei is actually a redemption story because people say that Rudy did nothing wrong and he was just bullied, but I will bring up the sloth here and say that that is a sin. His inactions is what led to it. So right now, the dead dragon, definition of sloth, you're being lazy. <laughs> You're in actions. You can't even move right now? Lazy. It's a little bit unreasonable. For sure unreasonable. But this is the moment that he realizes. Sloth? Bad, right? But he doesn't kill the cult member. He just says, all right, clean up the area once. With the day of the ordeal upon us, we mustn't allow our existence to be discovered. Clearly, the ordeal is some sort of ceremony, some sort of event. And I'm just going to assume that it is the unsealing of the witch as they try to do something with Amelia, right? So they're trying to be really suspicious. Sorry, not suspicious. They're trying to be really fucking careful. And then, what does he say? But notice how uh, Betrugus does not get mad at this cult member just yet. Even though the sloth was mentioned by the land dragon, it's not really this guy's fault. So he's fine with that. And then we talk about Rem and his friend. And then what does he say? His friend. And then I think the cult member says unknown, right? It is unknown? If the girl is dead or alive? And then what does Betrugus do? That's so slothful. Because you didn't do your due diligence. 
you didn't figure out whether you didn't like close the you know the loose scent therefore you are slothful and then he beats the shit out of his cult member and this when i was first watching it i was like this is all goofy as hell holy shit you're taking this too seriously but i realized that he is the archbishop that represents sloth he wants to not be slothful but sometimes you will be slothful and when that happens punishment must be made just like in Christianity or religion, we are all sinners, but we try to do the good thing. But if we commit a sin, you must repent to the Lord and forgive the sins. And this right now is the repent happening in my opinion. <laughs> Better is just, you know, beating the shit out of this guy because that guy was slothful. Just out of fucking nowhere. It's so good. And then he gets high from it and he's like, oh, oh, tie that tie that tie that. And then he says, we must repay love with love, right? The word love is... It has a lot of different meanings. When he says love for the witch, it's basically we need to repent our sins. We mustn't be slothful. We need to be diligent for the witch. You know, important days are among us. And then there's also a, a point where... Where is it? There's a part in this section where the cult members literally look at each other. I forget exactly when... And maybe I can't find the exact frame because I'm, you know, um, yeah, it, it's this moment. These two look at each other and they're like, Yo, I, I think we joined the wrong club. This is not the club that I wanted to join. These are definitely new recruits realizing, huh, we signed up for something we did not realize, bro. <laughs> so fucking peak. And then more peak bet to the goose, man. More peak better to go. Sate, 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 sate. And up until now, better to goose has been quite respectful, quite reasonable to Subaru. He's asked him questions and Subaru did not answer. And now better to goose realizes, you know what? I'm not gonna bother being nice anymore. You're gonna look into my eyes, I'm gonna change the order of the questions. And he goes, this, and licks the eyes, right? He fucking just licks the fucking eyes here. Why does such dense love hang so abundant upon your person? The love in this context is witch's miasma. And why? Because Satala just loves him, bro. He needs Satala's, you know, regression powers given to uh, Super, which I'm assuming has been given by, you know, Satala. Just helps him protect Emilio and Emilio is important to the witch's awakening. Therefore, that is the case. I'm not too sure. And then the gospel, bro. The fucking gospel, bro. This gospel is so important because apparently a gospel is something that each archbishop should have. He mentioned that if a gospel should happen, you, you sh if, if somehow you like a gospel finds itself to you, I don't know how a fucking book would just like find itself to you. But if a gospel does, then you can become an archbishop. I'm not sure. Like a gospel might be like proof that you are chosen to become an archbishop. I'm not really sure what that entails. Also, I wonder what's actually within the gospel. Maybe it's just like, you know, rule number one, you must always love Satala. Rule number two, there is no other waifu than Satala. I'm not really sure. You think you lick, you think Batirigus licked him because of the scent? Hmm. I like that headcanon. Yeah, I could, I could. He's a psycho. He wanted to make his presence be known to Subaru who's ignoring him. And the sense, yeah, I, I, I could be down for that. Look at the line here, right? I'm treating you so kindly. He is though, straight up. Better than Juice, right? He's a fucking insane lunatic. But if you look at the conversation and the and, and like the things he said to Subaru, it's just been direct questions. He's not threatened to kill Subaru. He's not doing any of that. He's just like, bro, talk to me, talk to me. A super ain't talking because he's mentally collapsed. And <laughs> Betrugis realizes, fuck this shit. No more. Fuck this bullshit, bro. And then he says, what does he say? In that case, I will change the order of my questions. And this is where he says, why are you acting crazy, right? Up until this part? Up until this part, I think Betrugis was in the right, man. Straight up, up until this part? He did nothing wrong. And now he's like, all right, now I'm going to gatekeep you on your insanity. And he does a little lick, literally licks his fucking eyeball. Now, why do you pretend to be crazy, right? And we talked about this in the chibi video. 
Better use is obviously on a scale of 10. 10. If 10 is like absolute madness, right? Better use is challenger elo for madness. Subaru is like two or three mind broken compared to better use. And therefore he's gatekeeping Subaru. I don't think that Subaru is pretending. I think that he's definitely fishing for sympathy. But at the same time, he is also mentally broken. I think both things can be true. It's just hilarious that Better Goose is literally like, yeah, 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 no. You're faking it, bro. You're fucking faking it. Because if you were cr really crazy, then you wouldn't care about anything. Like me, look at me. You are an insult to real madness. Yeah, I think Better Goose again is just like a super hardened veteran. Like, I wonder what it took for Better Goose to get here. Like, clearly this is like a veteran of madness. But in the beginning, right? In the fucking beginning. I bet you he had a mental collapse like Subaru too. Not everyone just becomes like this, right? No way. I bet that he was like, I don't know. We have to get a better use flashback. Maybe he was just hard as fuck from the beginning too, but I don't know. He's just a different level of madness and he calls Subaru like, you're fucking, you know, you're poorly acting. You're poorly acting. And just the insanity of how cute Better Use is while Subaru is having a breakdown it was so funny. Like, it was an emotional roller coaster. I'm like laughing, but I'm also scared. And it's emotional because Subaru is in a breakdown. But Better Use is literally just gaslighting Subaru. It's like, no, you're not crazy. Stop fucking faking it, bro. And he's look at this. How very comical. Like, look at this shit. Subaru is just having a breakdown and this is what's going on. Look! Come on, bro! Step out of it! Like, how am I supposed to take this seriously? I love just the mix of emotions I felt, though. It was actually fucking peak. Just the two... Just look at this shit. The duality of man. <laughs> this is first year freshman college. Yep. First year freshman college. Senior. Fully, just hardened, veteran, jaded, just attained enlightenment upon the madness, and just delving into madness. <laughs> Subaru, you could be like Better Than too if you could just, you know, fucking go crazy. <laughs> and then what else is that? Oh yeah, and then Better Than pops off. I pity your wretched, ugly, lowly, diminutive, sinful being, but yet... You're the one with all the fucking love from the witch, right? Imagine how just like unfair it must seem to better use right here, right? Because it's like this pathetic coward feigning his madness is the chosen one by Satala. I don't know the difference in the quality of the miasma right now, but I think Subaru might have more than better use. And he's just so upset that better use probably has devoted his entire life for the witch, right? And he still doesn't get enough love from the witch. But Subaru, every fucking regression, he just like, I don't know if it's a 2x, I don't know if it's an exponential factor, it just gets better and better and better, right? So, you know what they say. Talent goes to those who don't want it. Betrukus probably has sacrificed his entire life for one cause, while Subaru literally just doesn't even know what the fuck is happening and he's the chosen one. You'd rather waste away in stagnation than repay the goodwill shown to you, right? Sloth. Anata. Taida desne. You are truly slothful. I love that shit. He has a signature like this at the end to continue to finish the sentence. Or Taida desne. You are truly slothful, man. I love it. I love his fucking you know, good lines and... Now, this is time for Twister. <laughs> Rem, you know, defeats all the different cult members. And then... And then, what does uh, Betrigius like here? Betrigius's brain is trembling because this is another form of love, right? This is so beautiful. Betrigius loves this shit, right? That Rem right now, despite all odds, is still facing this adversity to save this guy. He's actually a fucking mad poet, man. Let's see. What else is really important here? And again, what the fuck is Roswell doing? Who really knows? <laughs> Better to use, I can't take you seriously when you make faces like this. The voice acting is just too fucking good, man. Yeah, you've come here to retrieve this boy. 
You should refrain from saying things that merely sound attractive. Do you have the resolve? Eh, what was that? <laughs> it's just too fucking good. This entire... Dude, look at the choreography. Look at the choreography. Dude, some K-pop shit. I fucking love it so much. Hmm. This part, the Huma. Look at where the water magic is forming from, right? Because there's the blood here. There's the blood here. Look. The blood orb and then El Huma. So fucking raw. Water magic using the blood. And she uses that to cut off Subaru's cuffs too at the end, right? And then this is just sadness, man. And then just when Su just when Rem, you know, Rem looks at Subaru and she loses focus. What does Betrigus do, bro? What does Betrigus do? My brain trembles. Authority of slot. Unseen hand. That shit was so cold. That shit was so cold. The way that his voice acting went from deranged clown to serious mode delivers that gap moe, the contrast, and he's like, hm, authority of hands. Sorry, authority of sloth. Unseen hand. Clearly, authority is a a power, right? We talked about earlier how maybe return by death could be Subaru's authority. If he is somehow pride, who knows? But authority of sloth, right? I'm going to imagine every archbishop has an authority according to their sin. And they have a power, unseen hand. And what is unseen hand? I don't fucking know. I see the rim hanging. And everything is darkened. And as the name suggests, it's an unseen hand. So like invisible hands are attacking. I don't fucking know. But that seems to be the power here. Really fucking cool. And if the authority is stronger based on how much miasma you have if it's proportionally related and if subaru could tap into these cult powers could you imagine could you imagine oh man that would be fucking sick what could subaru do please teach us the cult magic and then better goose makes us watch right before you is the result of your actions by doing nothing you practice law and I think it's a little bit unreasonable, but I see the logic there, right? Subaru is mentally collapsed. There, therefore, there is no action happening. But his inaction is what led to this. Therefore, you could perceive this as Subaru being slothful. Yeah, I get it. He's mentally broken. But you could also see how Betrigus kind of twists that into him being slothful. And it's our fault now. <laughs> Not, you know, Betrigus' fault. You killed her, Betrigus says. How awful. How awful. You did this, not me. But like, bro, you literally just did that shit in front of me, bro. Come on. You, you, and then Betrigus killed her. Super keen. Oh, dude, stop it. Oh, the twist to get that. Super keen. Bro, how am I supposed to fucking cry or how am I supposed to feel despair when you're just peak comedy? It's too good! It's too good! Go super And at this point, this face, wrath. Therapist Betrigus has diagnosed Subaru. Called him out of his bullshit. And now Subaru is healed from the mental collapse. Anger, wrath. These feelings are overriding the different feelings that he had that created the mental breakdown. Isn't Betrigus such a good guy? Betrigus allowed for this moment for Rem to self-sacrifice and to help Subaru. Betrigus is the reason why Rem looks so good. Betrigus is the reason why Subaru snapped out of the sloth and now I guess he's invoked with wrath. Betrigus is episode 15 and I think a lot of people don't understand this man. I will not take Betrigus slander in this channel. Ah! I finally got you to call me by my name. <laughs> right, he said this. <laughs> he just wanted Subaru to say his name, man. Oh, you're finally acknowledging me. What a nice guy. And again, it's only happened because Subaru wouldn't say Betrigus's name. <laughs> oh my god. And like, bro, again, Betri like Subaru's wrath, the anger. Crazy shit, and I'm getting so immersed again. And what happens next frame? 
Double chin better use. <laughs> How am I supposed to take this seriously? I can't. He hits me with double chin in this angle. What the fuck? <laughs> He's just such a peak character. <laughs> and yeah, this place is a mess now. We should get out of here, right? And then, hey, you know, rendezvous with the other fingers. So I don't know what fingers means. Maybe fingers are literally the cult members. Maybe the fingers are jargon. Sorry, jargon for like foot soldier cult members. I'm not sure, but there's fingers mentioned. The ordeal again is probably some sort of important ceremony for like reawakening Satala. And then he drops, bro. I honestly have no idea what it is. So I shall judge you as our Lord sees fit. I will leave you bound here. Should the gospel happen to find its way to you, right? Then you will find um, savior or something. So how does that just happen, huh? Should the gospel happen to find its way to you? How is that possible that a gospel just appears in front of you? Like gospel has got to be very important. Every archbishop has one. And if we do happen to have a gospel bef appear before us, then maybe we could become Archbishop of Pride, but maybe somewhere else in a different part of the world, that Pride candidate already has the gospel and is making his way here. I have no clue how the recruitment process works for this church of Satala. <laughs> I'm not sure if people are literally in the streets saying, oh, you, you know those crazy religious people in the streets saying, do you have a moment to seek Jesus Christ? If you don't, you will go to hell. So there's like people going door to door, like handing out gospels and like different fucking posters. I, I don't fucking know. What's my theory on why they don't kill Subaru? Because he's untouchable content. Look what Betrugius just said right here, right? I shall judge you as our Lord sees fit. I honestly have no idea what it is, right? Betrugius thinks that he potentially could be the pride candidate, but he doesn't know. So it's all up to chance now. I'm gonna just leave you hanging here. You can either survive, and if you do, then that is, I guess, how things work. And if you don't, then that's the way it's meant to be. So it's not up to me to deliver your judgment. It's up to the Lord, which is Satala, and just, you know, how see how it plays out. That's my opinion on what happened here. Bro, this face. This fucking face. Man. Crazy shit. Wait, we should gaslight the church members and say our Nokia flip phone is the gospel. Man, if we didn't have a Nokia flip phone and if we had an iPhone, we could literally show them like uh, a notepad app. Yeah, we, we, we would have a notepad app and we would just have a random book with bullshit text and see like, Behold, the newest gospel, right? <laughs> this face is fantastic though from Subaru. And then... Dude, the way Rem plops down here is so fucked up. But you fell. Look at this. Yeah, you sacrifice. I think Betrigus is really on point with Rem as well. You sacrifice yourself for love, defying your own fate. But you fell before your feelings reached them, and your love had nowhere to go. And now he literally drops her too. Anata, tied at this name. So even Rem, the way the way that she's like handling Subaru, Betrigus analyzes that shit, calls her slothful. Like he just. He low-key just like... Really, he's such an empath, man. He is such an empath. He just fucking knows. <laughs> Got cut sl Yeah, straight up. Betrugius is the type of dude that if like... You know, fucking... Uh, like, like if Rem got cucked... Betrugius is like, skill issue. It's your inaction that caused you to get cucked. It's because of you. You didn't get your love received. Slothful. <laughs> it's... It's so unreasonable though, right? There's so much mental gymnastics you can do to like prove why it could be slothful, but it's like Anata tied to this nay. Bro, the scream here. This fucking scream here was actually so fucking good. And then this scene, man. The rest of this scene, bro, I think I'm not sure exactly why Subaru was like bashing his head on the ground, because if he truly wanted to kill himself, he could have bit his hand. Sorry, bit his tongue. But he didn't, right? So I thought that he just like bashing his head on the ground to like kill himself. Yeah, the wrists are fucked up as well, but he could have just bit his tongue there, right? I I'm not really sure what the head bash on the ground was. Ugh, okay, next up, what happens? Rem crawling, bro. It's just like this whole scene with Rem crawling is just so fucking sad. 
again the girl literally got twisted and i wonder if she was playing dead or if she was passed out and she now regained consciousness i don't know not sure if the light novel confirmed everything but rem struggles to get here right and then <laughs> this part look shuma again subaru's cuffs get broken by using the blood of Rem and probably Subaru as well. It just, there's something so raw about that. Something so raw about using magic, water magic, and infusing your own blood into it. Just so raw, right? And now, what's her final words? Like, live, right? I love you. Live on. I love you. So fucking sad. <sighs> and like, She's probably still gonna get cucked at the end of all this. That's the saddest part, bro. You really are slothful, Rem. Anata, Taira Desne. And then, the rest is just a wrap, right? It's a fucking walk to the mansion. And with each passing, bro, seeing each member get stabbed, and as he continues to say Betrugus, bro, it's so good. Just repeated Betrugus. Betrugus. The piles of corpses of the villagers that the fucking cult members massacred on, right? Better the goose. Better the goose. We walked to the mansion and remember? Last run? We got there earlier, relative. Because in this run, by the time we got to the mansion, Better the goose, you know, did all that shit, so we got here way later. Last run, we got the mansion early, so there was not much snow like this, and instead the hidden passage in the library was frozen. So, this is like Puck, you know, freezing more shit as he goes berserk since Amelia is dead in the last run and this run based on his dialogue of sleep with my daughter and you were too late. This last Betrigus, bro. This last Betrigus. Ram, bro. And the kids are in the shack, right? The kids are in the shack, right? Ram, bro. 1v8. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, potentially. Next, actually, this could be one body. Ram, 1v8, and she's nerfed. Imagine if she had her horn, bro. Poor Ram. <laughs> A single dagger in her titty here. But where the fuck was Roswell, man? Where the fuck is Roswell at this time, too? What is he doing? Does he want this shit to happen? I don't know. And this final Betrigus. Look. Look at this final Betrigus, bro. This part was so fucking good. His face. Natsuki Subaru's facial... Uh, facial reactions are some of the best I've seen in any character. There is no other Isekai character that can make faces like this because they're all fucking Ikemen, bro. Subaru can make these disgusting faces. This isn't really a disgusting face. This is like a pitiful, sad face. The face that he made against Amelia when saying you have so much debt you could never pay me, that face was disgusting. And I've never, I would have never imagined that a main character of a show could ever make a face like this. Some crazy shit. And then the final Betrugus here has so much impact. We fall on our knees. And then, boom! Puck out of nowhere! It's a Puck? Look at that chin. Yo, Puck's been fucking mewing. Look at that fucking jawline. Holy shit, Puck. So is this your true form? And then Puck says, Nemure. Right? Sleep. Along with my daughter. Who is Emilia. And Subaru? I think this is Puck showing mercy. I think this is Puck putting him out of his misery. And... Puck definitely knows that Subaru can regress, right? I feel like he does. I'm not sure. The head falls off, and at this point, bro, when the red fucking credits start to roll, I didn't even know how to like process my feelings. I'm like, whoa, is the series ending? I know season three is coming out in October. What the fuck? Like, everything was just like so cinematic. The soundtrack playing Requiem of Silence with the credits rolling, and I'm like, Holy, and look at the body as well. Look at Subaru's body. Does it start to pile of snow? It does! Look at the body! It like stacks up snow, man! Oh my god. More snow, more snow as it turns into like an eternal blizzard. So, once Amelia is dead, I guess Puck just doesn't have any reason to live or care about this world and will destroy the fucking world. And puts it in an eternal fucking sleep. Fucking scary shit, man. <laughs> Look at White Fox here. 
sucking inserting their cute little fox, but hey. And that's it, man. And that's the end of ReZero. And you know what? You know what the crazy shit? Like, end of ReZero. That's it. I would respect them if they just ended the story here. Could you imagine the absolute fucking state of affairs? People would lose it. People would be like, no, you can't do this. No, we need more of the stories. No, it's just like ReZero ends here, bro. That would be fucking next level, but thank God. We know it's not over. And boom! <laughs> Appa guy! This time, no insanity, right? No insanity. This time, Subaru has a different look in his eye. But I'm not too sure. And the stench gets mentioned again from Rem, right? The unpleasant smell, huh? Again, the miasm just gets worse and worse with each run. And this final look? <sighs> this final look, man. It's better than in action. And rather than sloth, it seems like we're delving more into wrath. But like, I don't think he's here to make friends. Subaru needs to make powerful friends. There's no way you can handle this by yourself. And all the powerful allies are just in front of us. If you could just fucking realize and convince them, understand their incentives, figure out what's mutually beneficial and force I don't, I don't know, like partial fucking, you know, alliances. Little fucking things that, you know, we can all work towards. Until then, I see no way that we can solve this. And I feel like next episode, <laughs> we might just see him fuck up in just in a different way. And that's pretty much it. This is a one hour <laughs> review analysis of ReZero. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm trying to figure out how I can farm ReZero for all it's got. And, you know, maybe we can do one of these. Uh, more with each episode. Goodbye.